Wow, God bless you, God bless you for joining, share the broadcast. Write something, let me know where you're watching from. <clears throat> invite a friend, invite a friend. Tell somebody that the prophet of God is online. Invite somebody. Vishaka, God bless you. Vishaka is watching all the way from India. God bless you. I'm seeing Valley Bridges. Valley Bridges all the way from the U.S. God bless you. Um, this is, is this Holiness? Holiness, God bless you. Valley Bridges, God bless you. How is the U.S.? Is it cold now? Kate, Kate, how are you? God bless you. Kate is watching from where? Kate, Kate, this should be Mombasa, right? Winnie, God bless you for joining. Share the broadcast. Put your hands on the share button and share. <clears throat> I want to teach you what I call financial deliverance. Financial deliverance. Financial deliverance. So if you're watching <clears throat> and you're believing God for financial deliverance, I just want you to type, I receive financial deliverance. I receive financial deliverance. I receive financial deliverance. And I want you to put your hands on the share button and share. Tell a friend to tell a friend that the prophet of God is online. Invite somebody, let somebody know that the man of God is online. Rebecca Colley. Rebecca is watching all the way from Ghana. <clears throat> Rebecca, I'm coming in Ghana. I'm coming to Ghana around... Mm -hmm. No, no, next year, not this year, next year. I'll be in, I'll be in Accra, I'll be in Tam, I'll be in Tama Newtown. I'll be in Tama Newtown. Tama should be in Accra. Emilia Nyango, God bless you. Oh, it's getting hot now in the U.S. Wow, that is, that is great, that is great. Share the broadcast, let somebody know that the prophet of God is online. Tag somebody, invite somebody. Tell somebody to tell somebody that the prophet of God is online. Tell somebody to tell somebody that the prophet of God is online. <clears throat> so Rebecca, you will inbox me. We need to talk. Um, um, I'm planning to come to Ghana, but I'll talk to you about it. I'm supposed to be in Tama Newtown, but next year, not now. So I'll talk to you about it. I receive financial deliverance. Oh, if you're saying prophet... I need this financial deliverance. Just type it. I need financial deliverance. I receive it. I receive it prophetically. Even as you're typing it, I declare, let it happen your way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even as you're typing it, let it be your portion in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to read. I want to read from the book of Luke chapter 4, verse number 18. But I want everyone to do me a favor. Do me a favor, just share the broadcast, put your hands on the share button and share. Invite a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, the prophet is online. And tonight your life will never and ever be re remain the same again. Joy, joy, God bless you, my daughter, the Lord is your strength. Invite a friend, holiness, God bless you, Maureen, God bless you. Everybody that is joining, God bless you. I see Martin, Martin, God bless you. Just put your hands, I see Adelaide, Adelaide, God bless you. Put your hands on the share button and share. Tell a friend to tell a friend the prophet is online. And do this. Just write it seven times. I receive financial deliverance. Gladys, God bless you. Everybody that is joining, you are highly blessed. Put your hands on that share button and share. I want to teach you something very prophetic tonight. And I pray, I pray that you don't miss a point. I don't, you, don't miss, you don't miss a point. Don't put your hands on the dial. Leave it there and hear this, what the Lord has to say tonight. Luke chapter number 4, and the verse is 18. Then I want to show you something. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Rachel, I did a kimanti. God bless you, Rachel. <clears throat> God bless you. I want you to share this broadcast, Rachel. Tonight is very prophetic. Tonight is very prophetic. Tonight is very, very prophetic. Tonight is very, very prophetic. I receive financial deliverance. Even as you're typing it, type it with the revelation. Just type it with the revelation. As you're typing, declare it. I receive financial deliverance. Even as you're typing, declare it. I receive financial deliverance. Chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. 
to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set, li okay, and recovery to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptance year of the Lord. I'm taking it again. The Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The game starts there. <clears throat> he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. A simple question that I want you to ask yourself. What gospel does a, a poor person need? Now once you find that answer, we are good to go. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What does the poor call gospel? So hold it there. Then let's go to Isaiah 61, verse number 1. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 61, the verse is 1. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 61, we are reading verse 1 and verse 2 of Isaiah. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me again, because the Lord God has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. So now Jesus, in the book of St. Luke chapter number 4, Jesus was reading, quoting from the book of Isaiah chapter 61. Jesus was quoting Isaiah chapter 61. And he was saying, I'm anointed. But my anointing is to preach the good news to the poor. So a question that we must ask before we continue is that what does a poor person call good news? What does a poor person call gospel? In Isaiah 45, from verse number 1, Isaiah 45, verse number 1, the Bible says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand have I held, to subdue nations before him, and to lose the armor of the kings, to open before him double doors, so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you, and I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness. Now, if the Bible you're reading is your Bible, underline verse number three. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of the secret places. We are going to dwell on verse number three. That you may know that I am the Lord. The, God, the Lord who called you by your name. I'm the God of Israel. For Jacob's my servant's sake. And Israel my elect. I've even called you by your name. I have named you. Though you have not known me. Now verse number three. Let's go back there. I will give you the treasures of darkness. And the hidden riches of the secret places. We, we're going to dwell there some, some time. And please, I pray that you bear with me for some time because we are going to take a bit of time there. There's a mystery that I want to demystify. And I pray after this service, money will not look at you and run away in the name of Jesus. If you're the one I spoke to, let me see you. I meant three times. I pray after this service, money will not run away from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Financial deliverance. Let me say some few things here. <clears throat> the anointing came upon Jesus with the primary mandate to deliver us from poverty. The anointing that came upon Jesus had a primary mandate to deliver us from poverty. And I pray that if there is any atom of poverty in your family, in your life, even as you are preaching and listening to me tonight, may the anointing upon Jesus, anointing of the Holy Spirit, even with the Spirit of God as I'm preaching, let there be deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I will show you some deep things. I will show you some deep things tonight. <clears throat> what a poor man needs is anointed gospel. Now listen to me now. We are good to go now. What a poor man needs, Rachel, is anointed gospel. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. A poor man needs what I call the anointed gospel. There are people who are spiritually poor. There are people who are poor financially. 
Poverty is in different dimensions. But let me talk from the monetary perspective. You can be spiritually poor. You can be physically, financially poor. But let me talk from the monetary aspect. <clears throat> so what a poor man needs is anointed gospel. That Jesus became poor that you and me may be rich. So therefore, Matthew chapter 11 verse number 2. Let me take you a little further. Before we come back to Isaiah. We will come back to Isaiah chapter number chapter number 45 verse 3. But before we come back to Isaiah, let me show you Matthew chapter 11. <clears throat> chapter 11, the verse is number 2. Matthew chapter 11 verse number 2. <clears throat> we are reading through verse number 5. <clears throat> the Bible says, And when Jonah had had in prison about the works of Jesus Christ, he sent of his disciples and said unto him, Are you the are you the, the mess, are you the coming one? Or do we look for another one? Are you the one you are told is coming? Or is there another one? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and tell John the things which ye have the things which you hear and see. Go and tell John the things you hear and see. Go and tell John the things you hear and see. Don't tell John, go and tell him the things you have seen and the things you have heard. Brethren, there is a dimension of financial breakthrough that if you have not begun to access, even your own sister, your own brother will not believe in you. There is a dimension of money that God will release in your hands that, that God just make your environment to begin to appreciate you. It continues by saying, the blind sees and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf ears can hear, and the dead are risen up, and the poor have, have, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Ah, God, 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 God. <clears throat> I want us to read this with better light. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus is telling the disciples of John, go back and tell John what you have seen and what you have heard. That is part A. Part B, Jesus is affirming his word by telling them that the blind is seeing, the deaf is hearing, the, the, the dead is being resurrected, and the gospel is being preached to the poor. So meaning, when a dead man is resurrected, a poor man is not yet preached to. When a blind eye sees, a poor man has not yet received gospel. That gospel to the poor is what can bring the real identity unto the poor man. Because a real identity of a poor man is not poverty. For Christ died that we may be rich. He said, the Bible says, and he became poor that we may be rich. Now, that's the gospel a poor man need to hear. How can they come out of poverty? Brethren, listen. The Bible says in Proverbs that a wise man is, is, is despised because of his, though he's wise, but because of poverty, even with the wisdom, is despised. And, 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 and it, it's nature, and you have nothing to do about it. Listen to me, child of God. The gospel we are preaching today is limited because of lack of money. And I pray tonight, even as I'm teaching, that may God make you the epitome of financial breakthrough in your family in the name of Jesus. I am praying for you tonight. May God make you an example of financial breakthrough in the name of Jesus. That people will look at you and will say, we want God to bless us like Rachel, like Valley Bajes, like Holiness, like, like, like who is there? Like God must bless me like so and so. When money is not in your hands, your wisdom is despised. Even when a man of God is very anointed and is preaching, people will say, ah, this man is anointed, but ah, we are praying God should put money in his hands. People will pity you. They want, I don't know God, God is here. He told, go and tell John. <clears throat> go and tell John the blind is seeing. Everything is happening. And the good and the gospel is being preached to the poor. So the blind scene by Apple is watching from Las Vegas. God bless you. God bless you. Tonight is your night. 
<clears throat> Listen to me. When, when the Lord wants to announce you, when the Lord wants to announce you, even your family, He begin to allow people to trust you with money. And I'm praying, and I want to join in my prayer, that may God send people who can trust you with their treasure. For the Bible says, where the heart of a man is, that's where the heart is. If the treasure of a person is, is, in, is with you, they will release, you know, if their heart is with you, they will release their treasures to you. People will entrust you with good things. Not because of anything. If their heart is with you, they will release good things to you. And if God's heart comes in your direction, it begins to channel people who can release good things your way. And that's when, if you are jobless, you begin to hear there is a job. You are believing God for business. Business begins to work. Things begin to change. Financial deliverance you know, some, somebody asked me, man of God, what is money? <clears throat> to me, money is not what we carry in our hands. Money is a spirit. Money is not what we use for transaction. Money is a spirit. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I don't want to say some few things here, but let me say some, just some few. When we talk about financial deliverance, there is a dimension of respect that comes. The Bible says money answers all things. Remember, we would want to argue theologically. But the Bible says, everybody hear the sound of my voice. Check 90% of your prayer points. Out of, if you write prayer number 1 to number 10, everybody that is watching me here, if you write your prayer from number 1 to number 10, 8 or 9 are money related. <clears throat> oh, if, if, if you agree with me, I, wa I want you to say, if it's true, out of 10 of your prayer points, 10 at between 8 and 9 is money related. Or you are praying for a house, praying for a car, praying for a good life, praying for your children to be in good school, praying for, you know, pray. You realize that between 50 to 100, between 1 to, I mean 1 to 10, is around 7 or 8 or even 9 is money related. So, you are, unless you are praying for spiritual growth, you are praying for healing. You are praying for... There are, there are few things that has nothing to do with money. But 99% of our prayer points is money. And that's why when God releases money in your hands, in itself, it reduces your prayer points. So, <clears throat> I saw a man of God one day, and this man of God told me, man of God, one of my sons came to my church and he was praying. <clears throat> So this man came and he was kneeling before the altar and he started to say, God, money. God, money. God, money. So, <clears throat> the man of God asked him, my son, since you started kneeling down here, you're only shouting, God, money. God, money. What is the problem? He told the man of God, my problem, money. So how may I help you with money? So <laughs> you are going to answer you, yes, how? With money. When money is released into your hands, 90% plus of your problems will be sorted. And that's why I'm praying tonight that let money be released in your hands miraculously. I know there is a bit of working and diligence and everything, but there is a part of miracle money. There's how God can just provoke the the natural and the supernatural to work in your favor. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, let money touch their hands. And I'm not talking about a thousand shillings. I'm not talking about 10,000. I'm talking about millions of shillings or millions of dollars. I pray financial release in the name of Jesus Christ. 90% plus of human problem is money related. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Listen. Out of 1 to 10 of your prayer points, go and challenge me tonight. Just write 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10 prayer points. If 7 and above is not related to money, call me and challenge this preaching. And that's why I'm praying tonight in the name of Jesus. May God provoke the heavens to release money in your hands in the name of Jesus. If I spoke to you, let me see you I meant three times. If you're the one I spoke to, let me see you I meant three times. Now, there are facts that we need to know about money. As believers, 
there are some misconceptions and misunderstandings that we have around money. <clears throat> but I want to say some few things here. Yes, my son, money stop nonsense. I like that. Oh, Jesus. Money stop nonsense. Thank you for that, sir. That is deep. When money touches your hands, some nonsense will leave your life. And I pray that may money come into your life to release, to remove some nonsense. May some good money, 10,000, from 10,000 US dollars into a million dollar. I'm talking about millions of shillings. Let some good money touch your hand. Before this year of remembrance come to an end, everybody on the sound of my voice, you must testify of a financial, great financial door that God opened for you in the name of Jesus. If you are the one I'm talking to, let me see your amen. I say before this, our year of remembrance come to, it doesn't matter what you have gone through. It doesn't matter what your balance is saying now. I prophesy with my eye open in the name of Jesus. May God release some good money into your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. So there are facts about money. Number one, money is acceptable form of exchange. We know that. So we use it to sell, to buy, and so on. Is an acceptable form of exchange. That is a standard one of the one of the things. Money is controlled by a spirit called mammon. Money is controlled by a spirit called mammon. So there is this money. The man is a spirit, but it's, it's controlled by a spirit called mammon. I will explain these things. Money has what I call the caging influence. Money has caging influence. There's how money, lack of money can cage you, and there's how getting money can expose you. So money can either cage you, lack of money can cage you, and availability of money can expose you. Trust you, me, sir. Trust you, me, ma. What you are doing today, you see what you're doing now? What you're doing now? Let them just give you 10 million shillings, 20 million shillings. People, if Amazoka da 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 da, I, I shaka to kata. Let that money just land in your hand. Pam. Even the people that behave like they do not know you, they will say, "We know you since. We know you since, ma. We know you since, sir." When money comes into hand, money has a way to to amplify. Money, money has a way to announce, to amplify. And that's my prayer that may money come into your hand today, going forward, in a way that people will not be able to behave as if they don't know you. you no, know, poverty is devilish. Poverty is diabolic. Poverty is satanic. Poverty is 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 is. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to call poverty. When you don't have money, even your name, people don't know how to spell it. People begin to ask you, so uh, you say you are, you say you are, oh, uh, so you are the one. Because you don't have money. When you have money, people begin to say, no, we know you, sir. Are you not Rebecca? And we know you, Mpendo. Ah, the same Pendo. We know you, ma. We know you. Well done, well done, well done. Congratulations. When money is in your hand, when money in your hand is in your hand, respect is commanded by fire, by force. When money is in your hand, people cannot stand to avoid you. People cannot snob you. People cannot, you know, behave. Your, your existence is announced by money. Money provoke things to come your way. Let me tell you, money attracts money. If you don't have money, you attract the don't haves. If you have money, you attract the halves. <clears throat> I spoke to some one of my daughters some time back and he said, Papa, there was a time I used to have money. I would walk in a bank. They would sign me some money very quickly. Within one hour, I will pass everybody. <clears throat> now I ask her, what is happening today? He said, man of God, now I don't have money. Even if I go to the bank today, the kind of cure I will make. The same bank that used to break protocol for me when I had money. The same bank will keep me in a queue. I pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know who I'm praying for, brethren. But if you're the one you feel I'm praying for you, I pray that may the Lord God provoke. If there is any money you are expecting in the spirit or in the physical that has delayed somewhere, I pray that in the name of Jesus, may that money be released in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Money is not evil. These are some facts you need to write about money. 
It is the love of money that is evil. But money is not evil. Listen to me. Poverty. Poverty will make you to think that rich people are not, are not godly. I want to say something today. Please, <clears throat> please, I pray you understand me in this. When you are too poor, you think very rich people are not, are not born again. You think they are not holy. When you see a very young, successful lady driving a very dangerous Range Rover, you begin to say, this, see these ones. See these ones. These ones, they have joined the cult. See these ones. Your mentality is affected. That is how poverty interferes with your thinking pattern. God punishes the devil. That is how poverty makes you to begin to look at things. Even what is possible, you begin to... Today I'm angry in my spirit. I'm angry in my spirit. Listen to me. Poverty is a curse. Listen to me. Poverty is a curse. It is not the love of it is not the money that is evil. It is the love of money that is evil. Now they deceived us Christians and they only told us that the only way you can be holy is when you are poor. As far as you are poor, you are holy. The day you start touching money, you are not holy again. Who said so? And that's why they used to say as poor as a church rat. Because they know people who are poor, they are in church. I pray in the name of Jesus. There is a paradigm shift that is happening tonight in the name of Jesus. Money is not evil. It is the love of money that is evil. Listen to me very well. Do you know sometimes you lack money until you think you have a spiritual problem? Do you know sometimes the kind of prayer you scatter if God can put money in your hands today, you know you stop those prayers. Some, I want to ask you some few questions here. Do you know sometimes you think you have some serious problem? Not problem, it's money you don't have. <laughs> my father, my father, my father, my father, scatter, 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 scatter. When you open your eye like this, boom, you see one million dollars. <laughs> you change your prayer. Father, God, I pray may money touch your hands this year before it ends in the name of Jesus. And if God bless you with money, don't forget me. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know some of you, eh, you are dangerous when you find money, you forget Pastor Pia. We are just seeing you on views as Dubai, Qatar, US. We don't see you around again. You receive money, you disappear. Eh? <laughs> it is well. Money is not evil. It is the love of money that is evil. <clears throat> the next point for those who are writing. Money has a voice. And money gives you a voice. Money has got a voice. And money gives you a voice. You can talk nothing where people have money are. Even you yourself. When you get to where billionaires are seated, you just find even what, what even what you wanted to say, you realize you realize what you wanted to say, you have forgotten. You lift your hands like this, sir, sir. I want to say something. They say, what did you want to say? Say, mm, I've forgotten poverty. Hi, may God deliver us in the name of Jesus. Chapter number ten of Ecclesiastes, verse nineteen. Let me show you something. Chapter number ten, verse nineteen of Ecclesiastes. I will show you some few things here. Today, God must change your mind about money. Many of us here, we think having money is not godly. Can I tell you something? Poverty is not godly. God, God, can I surprise you? Do you know God hates poverty? I'll tell you two things. One, Jesus even died that we may not be poor. So that one proves to you God hates poverty. Number two, he says to him that has not, even the little they have, shall be taken away. Meaning God don't want poor people around. Even the little they have shall be taken away. <laughs> so if, if, if that is the thing then, it means we must be having something. So that those who have, have you realized in life, that those who have money, they keep getting money. And those who don't have money, they keep dying poor. Have you realized? 
It's those who you think they are wicked and they are politicians. They, they are doing those nonsense things. Money keep going their way. But you don't have money. You keep struggling. Every month you are praying for rent. Every month you are praying for school fee. Every month even food you are praying for. Every month you are praying for bills. Every month you are prayer point, my father, may, may my rent not be overdue. May my children not be sent home. May my car not have this problem. Your prayer is always 99%. Kai! I pray deliverance in the name of Jesus. Poverty is devilish. Poverty is not godly. Because our God is the... Is the is, he says, silver is mine. And gold is mine, says the Lord. So our God is the God of wealth. The God of silver and gold. Poverty is devilish. Chapter number 10, verse 19 of, of Ecclesiastes. Let me show you something. The Bible says, A feast is made for a laughter and wine for many, but money answers everything. Listen, brethren, where, if this Bible was inspired by the Spirit of God, as it is written, and the Bible says we should not remove or add, let's not correct the theology of the writer. The Bible says money, money answereth, money answereth. We may want to argue, oh, money may not answer to a good marriage, money may not answer to good health, Man, money may not take you to heaven, it's okay, we can argue. But do you know why some people who died because of some stupid sickness couldn't have died if they had money to go and cure it somewhere? Do you know how many people today should have died many years ago? But because of the money they have, they access some treatment that is helping them to sustain. And listen, some of them are not even born again. Some of the people that we know that have been struggling with cancer, whatever, dangerous diseases, because of the money they can access, that money gives them good treatment and they have been around for a while. I know about the healing power of God and I'm not talking about that one. Today I'm teaching about money perspective. Money can give you a good, good eating habit. You know there is how you are poor, you don't choose what to eat. I was talking on Sunday and I said, listen, sometimes there are some kind of sicknesses that come because you eat poorly. <clears throat> you're, you're only eating one dimension of either, either carbohydrates. You know if you're poor, you don't even know about carbohydrates and these things. They don't make sense. Oh, I don't know if I'm talking to anybody here. Somebody is telling you to teach, to eat. I don't know what you're eating. A poor man, do, 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 does a poor man understand a diet? It's provided I've eaten, my stomach is full, I'm done. <clears throat> when you're poor, do you think of, I should balance my food today, I should eat this breakfast, lunch, or I should not eat the percentage of food? What kind of nonsense do you tell a poor man? Once a poor man is finding food, they chop. Let me fill my stomach first. The rest, I don't know if I'll see it again. So, money gives you opportunity to make choices. Where do you want to live? Which car do you want to drive? What kind of food am I eating? God punish poverty in the name of Jesus Christ. Your life must change forever. I know there is a place of working hard and being diligent. But listen, poverty is spiritual. Because some of us, we are suffering because of inheritance. Hi. Hey. Listen, there are some people that... Ah, let me ask a question. For those who are Kenyans, do you want to tell me Uhuru Kenyatta, the former president, he prayed for God to give him money. We know he's not born again. We know. If he's born again, we know. If he's not, I don't want to judge him. But from the public, what is in the public domain, we know him as no, no, no much of a tight person. If I check your Christianity and the Christianity of Uhuru Kenyatta, who, would be, who should be more, more Christian? Let me leave the born again thing. But do you think Uru Kenyatta ever prayed for God to give him money? One day he even said to the interview, he doesn't know how, how, how lack of... He doesn't... He, can't, he, has no, he has never seen anything to be called anger. He's hearing the word anger from people. Because of inheritance. My prayer is, may your children not inherit poverty from you. Whether you are commenting or not, whether you are sharing or not, I'm praying for you. May your children not inherit this poverty thing. After this preaching I've done, may God just open your eye to be able to do something that will change your family. May your children never inherit the one thing in your family that is called poverty. So money answers everything. And I said, one of the facts you need to know, money is a voice. And money gives you a voice. I know some people, oh, people want to argue, leave those nonsense. When it comes to money, money will silence all those kind of... Do you know, 
Oh God, God. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12. Let me show you something. Chapter 7 verse 12. He said, for wisdom is defense as man is a defense. Wisdom is a defense as man is a defense. Listen, it's good to, to be wise, but it's, 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 it's better to have money. <clears throat> if money is in your hands, people begin to think you are wise. Do you know if a rich man does... <clears throat> people will clap for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> when, when a rich man is trying to read Bible and he make a mistake, for for wis, for wis, for wis, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wisdom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But for a poor man, you try to make that mistake, they will say, get out. Get out. What kind of nonsense is that? I pray one more time. May you never inherit poverty. May your children, sorry, never inherit poverty. If there is any struggle you have ever had as a person, may your children not be party to it. So when I talk about financial deliverance, I'm talking about being financial free. What we call financial freedom. To be delivered financially is to be financially free. You are free from this debt, you are free from that, and you are not struggling. It's one thing to be free from debt, but you are struggling. But when I'm talking about financial freedom in the perspective of deliverance, when, like I had Bishop Poyete for one day say, we owe no man financial dominion. And you can tell, even when you check around his life, you can tell, sir, wow, if you check, you say, now correct. But you know people who have money, they don't need a lot of, they don't talk too much. They don't explain a lot. Just one word is enough for a rich man. You who don't have money, you write paragraph before people understand what you are. You keep repeating. Listen, this thing I'm teaching now, if I had a private jet parked somewhere, my, my sermon would have ended. And everybody here, no prophet Robert has two private jet. I have businesses that are running in billions. I would just come and say it as well. Everybody will People will even share. If I... <laughs> If you see a footballer is putting <coughs> God, poverty shall not be well with you. Uh, somebody who we know a footballer who is earning millions is just coming to his Facebook page and is putting a dot. A dot. He did not write any word. He's just putting a dot. People are sharing. People are commenting. People are saying, yes, sir. A dot. Just a dot, Pam. Me, who is a prophet who prophesied. I don't have private yet, but God, poverty. <laughs> It shall not be well with you. Listen, you write, I prophesy. People say, sir, you the professor? For where? Ta. Money is a voice. Money gives you a voice. Money is a defense. Show me one son in this country. Show me one rich man in this country that you know that their son or their daughter is in, in one prison in this country. You see all these prisons around here. It's just full with children of poor people who cannot, don't have money to defend their children. So that's why they'll be convicted. But if you have good money, money will defend you anywhere, everywhere, anyhow. Money is a voice and money gives you a voice. When, when a rich man talks, everybody say, yes, ma. I pray from today, may a miracle happen in your life. And as I'm praying this prayer, oh, as I'm praying this prayer, if God gives you this kind of money and you, you misbehave like this, ah, God, let me pray first. <laughs> Father, let this good money come their way in Jesus' name. You are typing a man now by thunder. This one you must type seven times by force. I'm not going to beg you because I hate the way you are. But let me tell you the truth. I hate you the way you are. <clears throat> the way you are begging for money, this one. This one who, when I talk about millions, you have never seen million anywhere. I want to see you with millions. I hate you without a good car. I hate you without a good house. I hate you without good money. Me, I want to see you God prospering you. When you walk like this, people, without you talking, you say, <clears throat> people are saying, sir, did you say, sir, sir, sir? People want this. You are not talking. You just, you just clear your voice. Even me as your prophet, I don't like to see you the way you are. I'm praying and I'm agreeing with you in the name of Jesus. You know, your prosperity is my prosperity. Me, I'm a priest. I don't, I don't sell charcoal. I don't sell anything. Me, I preach Christ. So your prosperity is my prosperity. Your poverty is my poverty. Now, do you see why I'm saying I hate you the way you are? Because the more poor you are, the more I'm poor. The more rich you become, the more rich I become. Are you following what I'm saying? 
Because I own what you own. So if you are poor, I, <laughs> I refuse that part. No, that part only I refuse. Ha! Huh. Thank you, Jesus. So financial deliverance means financial freedom. If you are delivered financially, you enjoy what we call financial freedom. You don't live where your money chooses for you. You live where you want. Because <clears throat> ah, if you are delivered, you, you, you don't think like, like the way some people think. <laughs> Why do we need financial de deliverance? <clears throat> Number one, I've said a lot of things up there. Why do we need financial deliverance? Number one, so that you can fulfill your God-ordained life. So that you can fulfill your God-ordained life. That is how God has ordained your life to be. But when you don't have money, that part of you is limited. But when you have money in your hands, you can, you can do some things. There are things you couldn't do before. But because now you have money, now you can do. Do you know many of you here, you want to, you have been saying, man of God, man of God, me, I will build church myself. Me, I will build church myself. Now the way you are, you cannot even build, um, uh, live alone the full church, a quarter. But when you have the money, now you can fulfill that prayer. You can fulfill that dream. Me, I want to buy the man of God. I want the man of God to drive my jeep, my car. One day, man of God will be driving in that. I mean, I look at that car like this. I will say this one is my seed. I want to buy a house for a man of God. Let a man of God be praying in that house. And let that house be my. I want to buy for a man of God. But that dream will never come true if you don't have money. Because houses are not built in dreams. So when you are delivered financially, you live your God-ordained life. That life that God has ordained for you. You have ability to live that life. Number two, why do you need financial deliverance? So that you can manifest the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why do you need financial deliverance? So that you can, be, you can manifest the glory of God. Agai chapter 2. Agai chapter 2 verse 8. Agai chapter 2 verse 8. Chapter 2 verse 8. The Bible said, The silver is mine. And the gold is mine. Says the Lord. For the glory of the latter house, the glory of the latter children, the glory of the born again children of this hour shall be better than the glory of the former days. So if that's a God we serve, brethren, you must be able... Do you know why... <clears throat> let, me, let me explain this before I continue. Number one, I said, why do you need financial deliverance? So that you can be able to live a God-ordained life. There is what God wants for you. There is what God has predestined for you. But you are limited because of money. So when the money comes into your hand, now that estate, you can go there. That car, you can drive it. You want to fly to Africa, to the US, to the UK, just for whatever, you, you, it can be realized. Number two, so that you can manifest the glory of God. What do I mean? When you have money, what do you what do you what do, you, what do we mean by the glory? The word glory, glory is what we, glory. Okay, in my interpretation, glory is the manifest presence of God. In my grammar, what is glory? Glory is the manifest presence of God. In my wordings, so if then glory is the manifest presence of God, for that presence of God being made manifest to come out to the people, you need money to push it. You need money to push it. I don't want to give a lot of examples. There is the glory of God that is expected of you to manifest. And that glory will not be made. Do you know, there are people that even you, you know you understand better than them. But because they have more money than you, you want to, you feel like, you feel like somewhat. But when there is money, the presence of God in you is well manifested. If I explain this further, some people may misunderstand me. Number three, why do you need deliverance? For it will help you to manifest redemption. Why do you need financial deliverance? It will help you to manifest redemption. That is number three. 
Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. When you are free financially, you have the ability to, re, to, to manifest the redemption work of the cross. Chapter 5 verse 9, the Bible says, And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you are slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Mm -hmm. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nations. For you to be able to stand strong and talk about the finished work of the cross and redemption. People want to see your life. Does it look like what you are talking about? It's very easy for your sister to believe in what you are preaching when they have seen it. It's very easy for your brother to follow your Christ after they have seen him. But before that, God is manifest in your own life. Your own biological brother or your biological sister, it may not be very easy for them to believe you. Number four, why do we need financial deliverance? So that you can be a blessing to others. So that you can be a blessing to others. Do you know sometimes you just want to give people, but if you see the way you're also struggling, so you don't know, between, do I give them? Or do I, you know, you don't know between, you know, you, you're even confused. Are we, are we together here? <clears throat> when, when you are free financially, you can easily help somebody. Some of us, we have tried to help people, it's not because we have so much, but because we have the heart to do. So you, you try to separate within the little you have. Somebody's child has to go to school. You know, you need to try and help them. Oh, you know, but even you, you are struggling. So you're trying just to separate the little you have. To prove to God that since I can be trustworthy with the little, Father, trust me with the much. It's not because you have. You just, you just want to prove to God, I'm trustworthy with the little you have given me. So I, I, I want you to trust me. I want to allow you now. Trust me with more. Not because, but when you have enough and you have the understanding of the, the challenge is when people receive money when they are not having light of the word. Now that's where danger comes. They take advantage of others. They manipulate others. But when you have money and with the understanding of the scriptures correctly, you can be a blessing to other people. Number four, number five. Why do you need financial deliverance? So that you can further the kingdom of God on earth. What do I mean by father? You will use the money that God has given you to expand the work of God. You can sponsor a crusade. You can sponsor a program. You can buy instruments for the church. You can buy a bus for the church. You can buy a land for the church. You can buy a TV station for the church. So the church can use the TV station to be able to preach and reach many people who cannot be reached physically. When you have money, that money now can be used to further the work, to expand the work. To, to extend the work. But when you don't have money, you remain wishing, if I had money, I would sponsor one powerful crusade. And wishes, eh? <clears throat> if wishes were food today, I think nobody will go to the market. If wishes were money, nobody, want, nobody will be looking for money. But when you have the money, you can sponsor a ministry. You can sponsor a man of God. Man of God, I want you to preach. Don't think about money. I want you, what I want you to do, you preach Christ. You do the gospel. Let me do the bills. You know, when you have money, you can give the man of God peace. You say, man of God, I want you to preach. I know you are called. And as you are preaching, I'm blessed. But what I will do, let me handle the bills of the ministry and the bills of the man of God. See, people have billions of money. <clears throat> That's why I got angry yesterday and somebody was asked, telling me, oh, you know, some pastors are just doing business. I said, That's nonsense. There's nothing like church business. Listen to me. I have sold my things for the kingdom. I have given what I treasured for the work. I have walked when I'm not supposed to be walking. I have slept without food when I was supposed to take that money and eat. I have walked without good clothes when I was supposed to use that money and buy good clothes. When I hear somebody saying this, I told them if church was a business, then we would, these tycoons we have in this country, they will have invested in church. 
show me one man in this country or that one woman who is successful that is a billionaire who is invested in church and is doing church business tell me if you know one from the president or from those rich people president is not even rich there are people in this country who are even richer than him so from even the president or anybody that you think you know who is rich tell me one person who have decided me i'm going to do church business i'm going to open churches employ pastors and they'll be collecting offering and tithe for me for profit if you have if you know one but you know believers we like hearing such kind of things or you know church business okay there are people who may be doing church the wrong way but don't it should not be like church business power. Mm -mm. Because if, there were, if church business was lucrative as it were, with the kind of aggressive politicians we have in this country, hey, every politician today will be having a church. And if they cannot preach, they will hire and pay a preacher. Ministry is a calling. Me, I want to pray for all my daughters and my sons on this platform. And if you are a daughter of Prophet Robert or a son of Prophet Robert, from my heart, I pray for you. May my God put millions of millions in your hands. A money that nobody else has ever touched. Leave those people you hear in your family ever touched money. Those who are nurses' money. There is a dimension that God can bless you and I pray you will. Between now and December, may God raise from me in this generation and among these daughters and these sons, under the sound of my voice, people a generation of women and men that will touch good money. People will say, Prophet, hold this 10 million. Prophet, hold this 20 million. Prophet, hold this 100 million. I pray for you. May you be the one I'm talking about in the name of Jesus Christ. There is nonsense in your family that must stop when money comes. There is so much things that are not correct that must be stopped in the name of Jesus. So I pray for you. That may God release money in your hand in the name of Jesus. So see you tomorrow. <clears throat> Today I had a guest. Tomorrow, I will be trying to come on by nine sharp. I declare in the name of Jesus, may my God prosper you and bless you. So that you may have a burden to expand his work. Sponsor a crusade. Sponsor something. Let it go into record that one day in your life before you died, you also did something for a man of God. Let it go into record one thing in your life before you go back to the Mecca. That there was a one thing you did in a church. Don't just be an average believer. Don't be an average giver. Don't be average believer. Don't be average giver. For you to receive something supernatural, something extreme, something that you have never seen before, do what you have never done before. I pray for you. May God see you through and God bless you. Shalom. See you tomorrow, 9 p.m. East African time.